YouTube, what's going on? HRG, welcome back to Galbracer 2... Galbracer 2004, episode 293. Yeah, I was just, just, just trying to get my twos together, and it just came out to two, so there you go. Um, another thing in the HRG of bloopers, uh, amongst the millions of them at this point. Uh, we have a good card here today. Five races uh, on the second week of December. Three graded stakes races included a lot with the three-year-olds. In fact, I think the entire racing schedule today is of our two and three-year-old horses. And I believe, no, little my, the old gal, the mal, the mare, the old gal, the mare. Here, here we go. HRG's off to a great start. She will be up in the grade three because, um, yeah, I, I just don't really uh, need to run grade ones with her anymore. I believe she is a GWS Sprint champion. No, she doesn't have a title. Little Mai doesn't have a title at five. Ooh, the, why? What have I been doing with you? Uh, I'm just looking at her notes. No, she's supposed to have the dirt title. So she has six dirt wins. But she apparently not. <laughs> When's the last time she's won a grade one on the dirt? A long time. Since June of last year. Or is it June of this year? No, June of last year. Over, over a year and a half since she's won a grade one on the dirt. Like, I can't, I thought she had a tie. That's, wow, okay. And I'm putting her in grade threes. Can I, like, negotiate her out of this race or, or something? Um, I could cancel the ride, but the thing is, I don't even know what else is available on the calendar at this point in the year. So even if I scratch her from that grade three, there's no guarantee there's a grade one open. I just... Um, gosh, that's like really actually, um, yeah, that's a bummer, man. That's really a bummer, but you know what? We're just going to go ahead and roll because, um, I can't even tell you how or why I thought she had a title because in my notes it says here that she's, she's won six grade ones on the dirt in this game that gets you the title. As long as it's six dirt grade ones. Exclusively grade ones and six of them that your horse wins you get the title. I've done it several times before you guys have watched me do it several times before So clearly I made a mistake and added an extra number because The game doesn't lie when it comes to titles that you win if you do it the right way unless it's glitching And I haven't experienced that with titles every title I get or I haven't received is because I either met the requirements or I didn't In this case, I clearly haven't met the requirements, but my note says oh, yeah, she won six grade ones and I've just been racing her in grade twos and grade threes. I don't think the plan, I didn't think the plan was to do that with her, was it? There's no way. Like, I would like for her to be a Hall of Fame horse. I thought that was the plan. And then that's why I dropped her to grade threes and grade twos. Apparently, I made a mistake in adding a number to her notes. Anyways, we're up here in the open. Seven furlongs on the dirt with our two-year-old filly. You made me promise this. It's a field of 14. And uh, it's a pretty competitive field. Yeah, there's about half a dozen horses that... Uh, don't really have a good chance here today, but for the remaining eight, they all have a chance to win. So you look at you maybe promises here. Beautiful gal. By Gentle House out of free fear. Um I I don't really know what to expect of her still. Like she should be really good, but I don't know if that's gonna be her ceiling or not. Um she hasn't won any graded stakes raises. If I'd none of the two year olds have yet, I don't think so. Big Friday will be going for his first, I believe, later today. Um See, so yeah, I don't really know what to expect of her. Like, am I even... I know she's... I think she's won a couple of races. I don't know how many, though. I don't know when. Um, let's see. Yeah. My notes are still, like, really a disorganized mess. Like, it's easy for me to understand for just quick recording purposes and just kind of keeping, you know, stats down. But, like, it's really not organized like I need it to be, so data and, and important points i need to like fine tune but i do see in here fortunately that i have one with her so yeah she should um and to feel like this i'm actually surprised they're giving her seventh 
I think she was a bit... I, I mean, I, I feel like she's better than that. I'm just saying, when it comes to expectations, I just don't know exactly how good she's going to get. I don't know what her ceiling is. I don't know if she'll reach levels of East Side Ban or if she'll perform a... Uh, gosh. I don't know, you know? Galaxy Star Cleopatra type of run? I have no idea. And we need some space here. We need some space. It's kind of tight. We're in traffic. Okay, she's got some clear air. Now we can move. Now we can move. Now we can move. Revolution, none. But we do get last corner leader. And I'm just going to ride with her all the way through. 12 is still there on the inside. Stay focused. Stay focused. Stay focused. Stay focused. Stay focused. Uphill climb. I think we're still going to get to do it. The 12 is still there. I'm not going to look. I refuse to look. I refuse to look. I refuse to look. She's just going to hold on. And I said it halfway through the race. I'm like, they're giving us seventh. I think she's in a good position to win this race here today. And she gets it done. That's a good way to start. You made me promises because I can't actually fit the whole thing because Gout Racer and, well, really Tecmo, who creates this game, decided CAPTCHA needed to exist to only allow you to do certain amount of letters for names. Therefore, I can't fit the E and the S. So it's just, you made me promise. I guess it's the same thing. She gets the win, though. That's really what matters, right? And, um, yeah, I think I started her a bit earlier um, than I should have, you know? Like, I think I could have held her a bit more in this stretch before even giving her the whip. Uh, full explosion. Could have caught us um, Could have caught us at the end there if that race was just a little bit longer. Thankfully, it was only seven furlongs, and I think she handled that pretty well. Fast pace as well. We were running pretty hot. 11.6, 11.4, 11.8. Those are fast fractions. You're close to the tens there, so... Yeah, we were supposed to finish seventh. She finishes first. The favorite actually finishes where we were supposed to finish. So we swapped positions. And you maybe promise this gets it done with a bang. 8,100. Jockey Evo. And Riviera is happy as he should be because he usually gives me good horses. And I usually don't disappoint when I have good horses, at least. Most of the times I don't. There are horses I'm trying to figure out, then I struggle. Or, in the odd case, are just the horse that I just can't seem to figure out. And that horse could be a good one. Then in that case, I just kind of stink. Working with that horse, but that's okay, because I'm not meant to be good with every horse. I don't think every player is meant to. Um, we all have our specialty horses, right? And ones that have worked really well for us that we kind of rely on. And I think that's normal. I think that's cool. You know, we all have them, and some of them are the same, and some of them are different. So, big grade one here. Tur Turf 8 Furlong, racer for Big Friday. I was talking about him earlier. He's supposed to finish first here today. The crowd says he's got it. The bookie says we should have this in the money. Second favorite is Imminent Smile, the 14 horse at the bottom, going off at essentially 5-1. to one. Um, Yeah, we have about a whole dollar of an advantage in the betting market. So that tells me, you know, they're pretty confident. And looking at this field, like the only horse I'm actually worried about, uh, Rainy Uranus, or Uranus, depending on how you want to say it. Uh, good horse. I'm not going to sleep on that horse. Angelo, also a good jockey. Sunny Charm. In fact, we're not looking at these horses here, but just want to kind of give you the, the quick rundown. I take every race seriously in this game. Uh, I don't just look at it just as a race and then just walk off into the sunset. Like, no, I still think you look at the field, you identify if there are horses you should be mindful of, because I think there are some really good in-game horses that can kind of catch you out um, if you're not completely prepared. So Big Friday, ready for his big grade one debut. I think he'd be the first of the two-year-olds to actually get a grade one victory. So really pulling for that here today. Let's go look at the horses. Uh, Northern Rock. Third favorite here with Dean. I don't really know about this horse. And not really worried. Loses well. Yeah, you don't really have the heart, kid. So I'm not worried about you. Um, let's see. Who else do we have here? Careful Marlin. This is a horse I've used before. I like Careful Marlin. I actually think this horse is being a little bit under bet. Going off at essentially 9-1. to one. I think this horse should be closer towards that 6-1, to 7-1 to one range. I think Careful Marlin's a good horse in this field. Kind of, again, so. The betting public in this game is not always correct. Like, the algorithm for how they determine it. I think this horse has a better chance of finishing higher than they're expecting. Uh, we move on to Sunny Charm here at the 5. Another good horse, Tanaka. Our, um, I mean, Tanaka has kind of annoyed me now. We're like, I just don't want to really associate with him. I love Tanaka for, like, what, a year or two? Like, in, you know, reality here. And then he just started getting weird, and then just it just started just annoying me. And then but before you know it, I don't really consider us like friends. He's just more of like an acquaintance that I have to work with. That's how I view Tanaka. He's on this horse, Sunny Charm. Uh, yeah, Sunny Charm at, at at the fifth spot, going off at eight to one, nine to one. If you want to round up or down, depends. Yeah, I, I like that position. I think that's fair. Rainy Uranus, uh, written by uh, Angelo. I talked about earlier. Really, really good heart rating. And like I said, this is the horse I'm worried about. Can handle this distance. Really strong at a mile. 
Um, runs well when it's not the summer, so definitely got to watch out for this 12. And uh, the two Eminent Smile. Eminent Smile is a good horse. I can't say I've ran against Eminent Smile enough to really develop that fear I have for it like I do for Rainy Uranus because that horse has beaten me before. But this is obviously the good second favorite. Big race, okay. Going to be showing up here today. Uh, if it's a slow pace, we can take advantage of that, though. Big Friday does want to... Can I set the pace with Big Friday? I think I might be able to. If we can set the pace with Big Friday, I might put the pressure on him. But I actually have in my notes here that he's a proceeder. Realistically, he could be a front runner, but when I looked at my um, my previous races of where I was running him throughout the race, I kept him like in third. Not fourth, not fifth, not first. I tried him in first and he didn't win that race. But I've, the more times I've kept him in third place throughout the race, the more races he's won or he's had, um, you know, a higher result in. Not a lot of data to pull from, but that is the data as it stands. So I'm going to continue to run him as a proceeder. But because his parents have such varying growth types, like, it, you know, it's just it's that weird gout racer thing where it's probably just somewhere really finite. And it's the one thing I'm kind of starting to get a little bit annoyed. And I might even change my approach to breeding. Like I may like I'm we're going to focus on smart breeding, but I'm also going to consider breeding horses together with good attributes in certain categories as well as leg types. Because I, I like the flexibility, but I also like it when the horses can actually give us something that we can determine pretty quickly. I feel like the last couple of breedings that have happened, the leg types have just kind of varied amongst the parents. So that's why it's been a little bit harder for me to figure it out with, you know, essentially their offspring here. And um, again, it, it's not a bad problem to have. It's just something that I don't want to be like a reoccurring thing with like every two-year-old, right? I think that's, that's reasonable. Um, and again, we have horses that have leg types in several positions. So that is what I wanted. But um, this recent batch of, uh, you know, yearlings and young, young horses we've had, they just all seem to have this knack for just having these weird leg types that my previous horses haven't had from similar parents or the same parents, you know, especially the same, you know, sire. So that's kind of what's throwing me off, but you get big Friday going here. I'm not going to put him under the whip yet. Cause I think he's got enough to hold on. He's got last corner leader. The 14 is rolling. The 14 is rolling. Come on, Big Friday. Stay focused, my brother. I think I went with the wrong hand there on the whip. And the 14 is going to fly right past us. That's Eminent Smile. Like I said, it's a horse that hasn't beaten me often. Beats us here today. And second favorite ends up beating the favorite. Turns out I under uh, undervalued Eminent Smile there. You lose a race at Big Friday. I did not want to lose. That's um, not how I wanted that to go at all. The pace was mid, but um, yeah, that that's really not good. That that's just not good. It's unacceptable for me. I should not have dropped that race and that effort. But Eminent Smile seemed like he was on a charge. They were on a charge, and um, yeah, I took advantage of that. I just, yeah, uh, obviously something went wrong there. Um, still, like you know, I was talking about the leg type, and it's not the race doesn't come down to you know, that costing us the race. No, because I think Big Friday was comfortable. He had enough. We clearly beat the rest of the field. We just got beat by essentially the second favorite, which I would have put as the co-favorite um, that I, you know, essentially underlooked. That's the horse that beat us. We beat the rest of the field, right? So Big Friday is a good horse. He beat everybody else, but um, just close. Yeah, kind of just didn't really have anything in this stretch. And that's unusual because that though we've had those moments and he's kicked into high gear. So... Obviously, you know, I wasn't um, I wasn't putting him in the best position to win there. So I'm disappointed in myself for that because I think he's too good of a horse to not have that come up in our favor. But Eminent Smile was on a roll. Like, in all honesty, if I didn't get a revolution, I don't know if that I don't <laughs> that that horse was really charging. That was kind of a fast charging horse and just blew past us, man. Like there was really nothing we could do. I think even had that been a really, really good start for me on the stretch, I still think Eminent Smile would have been right there with us at the end. So I think a revolution would have realistically been the only way to win. I just thought we would have had a, a little bit more of a gap to make that work. And like I said, I did not execute that well with Big Friday. Second place, good result, but still, you know, we were supposed to win. And, you know, when the pressure's on to win and you don't win, like, yeah, I feel that 100%. So we have to move on. The show rolls on. It's a great three here with little mine again i 
Thought she had a great, um, a great stakes championship title in, in, in the dirt category. She doesn't. Shame on me for uh, not having that correct. So I talk about it. There's things I still got to, you know, improve. And this is also what happens when I have these long spouts of not playing the game. I get in and out of my rhythm. Sometimes I can come back and win races and have good results, which, yeah, we won our first race here today. We finished second in that one. That's, that's not a bad day. If I was a jockey, I'm feeling good today, right? I'm doing very well on the card. If you're a jockey, you're doing well on the card if you win the first race. You, you know, you come out, win the opener strong, and then you finish second in the greatest stakes race just after, right? That's a good day for a jockey in a real life. So I think we have to sometimes keep those type of elements in mind, too. But... I just feel like I could have done better to help my horse win. And I feel like I let the horse down and the connections involved. So that is not ideal. And like I said, I just got to got to figure out what went wrong there with Big Friday. Part of me wanted to run him as a as a front runner in that race when I was talking about the pace and identifying that for the rest of the field. But um, yeah, like I said, I had in my notes that he's a proceeder based off of where I've had him most of his races in his career, which I think is like four or five so far. So I stuck to that. But the game is probably still, I'd be shocked if it actually tells us his leg type. Remember, I still don't know. It's just question marks. So I'm still having to guess. Um, man, gosh, like I talk about it all the time. I know I can just go into exhibition. It's just like, I shouldn't have to do that. Like the game should be a little bit better, right? The programming should be a little bit better to tell you what your horse's leg type are, as long as you're close. Now, stamina isn't good here for Little Mime. And again, I also have in my notes here that she also wants to run as a proceeder, but I don't think it's going to work here today. Yeah, I don't think so. Very late start on the spurt here, but I, I put her completely out of position. So just that quickly looked like it was going well. And uh, already that's two races. I don't think I should have dropped there, but that one with little my that's a complete disaster. Complete disaster. So, she's also, again, another horse as a five-year-old mare that the game still hasn't told me her leg type. And I've tried doing the exhibition races with her, but they essentially say she's still out of position. <laughs> and to think that's also prevented how much I can achieve with her now that she's a five-year-old mare. And again, this is a five race card, so this is bang, bang, bang. There is no time for me to stop and to dwell as much on the previous race as I would like to. <laughs> and then Angel Hearts is up here, actually expected to finish 12th. So finally, a race with no pressure. I can actually get my bearings because, yeah, apparently, um, yeah, like I say, Big Friday dropped that race and Little Mai just, I mean, disaster, disaster among disasters. And a very, very tough China Mile field. Here with Secret Eden, the one horse, Arrogant Friend, the three, Clear Trial, the favorite, the five, Manual Attack, the seven, next to us, post position number seven, Final Movie, the third, it's a stacked field, man. Now, Angel Hearts, I think, is a great horse. I mean, he's a very good horse um, so far in his career. Um, he's a four-year-old, as you can see here. He's got one grade two. He's got two grade ones at a mile, two grade ones at 10 furlongs, two grade ones at 11 furlongs, uh, a win at 12 furlongs for a grade one, and a win at 12 and a half furlongs. So ooh, he's a good horse. By Gentle House out of Chasing Hearts, no surprise there. Chasing Hearts hasn't really, I mean, she's never failed us with anything. And as our first uh, Philly to mare into the gout racer gws hall of fame like she she will always be a um important horse you know for the channel and the community just because of that that achievement like i had no horses in the hall of fame until chasing hearts got in there so um as far as our originals are concerned she was the first original and uh, named by abigail who's been one of the best and biggest supporters of the community so um 12 for angel hearts here today and i know like i'm running him a distance shorter than he wants to go um okay all right i mean like i said no pressure so like if i don't do well then it's no big deal but i i felt confident with you know angel hearts I, i've had a little bit i think of blind confidence with uh big friday and little mind like i've done well with them they both have uh in the case of at least uh 
Little Mai, multiple graded stakes wins, especially grade one. She has six grade one wins. Big Friday does have, I think, two grade threes to his name. But, um, you know, because I still don't know their leg type, that's still tricky. And that's still an important part of the race. So I just kind of have to work with it until I get it figured out. Hopefully sooner than later. But Angel Hearts, we're off to a rocket. I know his leg type, so there should be no struggling here today with Mr. Hearts. Hence why I've won a lot of races and graded... You see, do you see the correlation? Like, when I know where my horses want to be and how they want to run, I usually can have success with them. But when it's question marks, and then I do my exhibition races, keep in mind, they probably have triangles that are... They probably have multi-shaded triangles. Because, again, I've been using broodmares and sires that have had leg types in multiple positions. So their offspring are now getting multiple type of areas that they can run in a race you're not going to figure that out just in one race unless i guess you're fortunate or you just get it perfectly dialed in i don't so even if i do exhibition races just to see where the ai puts the horse it's not always a guarantee it's still just a general area and yeah that gives me something to work with but it still may not officially tell me which still can hurt our performance in some way you know let's go my man let's roll buddy game are we sleeping on my dude Angel Hearts or what? Are we sleeping on Angel Hearts? We're going to run this 11 down. We're going to do it. Come on, buddy. Keep it going. Angel Hearts. Less than a furlong left to go here. I have to go on the revolution because, like, this is a race we're not supposed to win. But going from 12th to 1st, I'm not even going to say the rest because he does the rest. Angel Hearts <laughs> wins the China Mile. You know, I have to do better on horses that I don't have good results with. I will always hold myself to that standard. But with horses that I believe I've been having good results with consistently, and we haven't really shown much error, I do think, you know, I do think that it's fair to give that horse its proper respect. Because Angel Hearts gets it done, man. He gets it done, and he makes it easy. Perfect ride. Get the Revo. You kill it in the end. You win a race you weren't supposed to win because, oh yeah, they said you were supposed to finish in 12th. <laughs> you run a 10-7 fraction off of a slow pace. Perfect setup. Final movie, Simple Cannon. Scary good horses. Probably would have beat us without the Revel. Maybe, maybe not. I th Angel Hearts was going to be there with him the whole way, as much as he could have. The Revel definitely helped, but it just means we literally ran a perfect race look at that trifecta if you bet two dollars on that trifecta for an 8 13 11 finish you get paid thirty three hundred dollars that's just off a two dollar wager you bet ten dollars or fifty man that's a good day isn't it <laughs> this is one of my highest evals i've had all year like i keep that in mind like hitting 12k is always like a goal for me it's very hard to do i think but i'm sure i know people can do it it's just it's hard for me to hit <laughs> So when I get anything that's like a, over like 11,500, that's a really, really good ride. And that's a good, it's just a good overall team effort. Just knowing where the horse wants to be. The horse responds. There you go, right?